Hello, this is Dr. Robert McMullen, and I'm going to talk about the uh, medications, especially the old antipsychotics that are toxic to the brain and cause brain cells to die. And I'm going to talk about some medications that are neuroprotective and helpful to the brain. And, uh, and some related things about psychiatric illness and whether the brain deteriorates or, or not. Uh, I'm a psychiatrist. I've been in practice for over 35 years. I have always specialized in psychopharmacology, although the last uh, nine years I've, I've also had <clears throat> TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, which is a nice addition to treating depression and uh, OCD and Parkinsonism and, and other disorders. Now, I, I remember a long time ago uh, reading articles and, uh, and uh, seeing brain scans about how patients with schizophrenia uh, would deteriorate in the uh, ventricles, the empty spaces of fluid the, in the brain would get bigger as time went on. And there was um, some discussion about whether this was because the illness was progression, progressing or whether it was maybe the antipsychotic was making them worse because the ones on the most antipsychotic, like Haldol, would have the bigger increase in this fluid volume. Now, the bigger the fluid volume, that meant that the, the brain was getting smaller. And then people would argue, well, the people on the higher doses of uh, Haldol were just more sick, so then that's why they were deteriorating. It wasn't the Haldol causing the deterioration. Well, in recent years, we have found that it is the Haldol that is causing the brain cells to die. It seems like a lot of psychiatrists don't know this yet because... All the literature is in the basic science literature, and we don't subscribe to the neuroscience journals. They're very expensive, and we get enough journals. And uh, so there's not as much Passover of information as there should be. But it turns out that all of the old antipsychotics, perfenazine, uh, thorazine, chlorpromazine, uh, Haldol, which is haloperidol, prolixin, which is, the name escapes me right now, but all of the old antipsychotics cause toxicity to brain cells and cause brain cells to die over time. And, uh, and this is bad enough because an illness like schizophrenia is often a somewhat degenerative illness in itself and that often the patient will continue to deteriorate a little over time on his or her own. So this is adding injury to insult. Uh, beginning with Risperdal, all the new antipsychotics are actually neuroprotective and they protect brain cells from dying, and they promote neurogenesis. They promote the growth of new neurons. And uh, this is because they uh, affect serotonin receptors, not just dopamine receptors. Now, Risperdal, I've always seen it as an in-between medicine, that it's like an old medicine because it can cause uh, extra pyramidal symptoms somewhat easily, stiffness and being Parkinsonian. And uh, in the toxicity problem, it is also, as long as it's in low doses, like one or two milligrams, or maybe three milligrams, it's like the new ones. It's a positive, it's... Uh, 
it's neuroprotective. If you get up to very high doses where it's beginning to cause a lot of Parkinsonian symptoms or neck twisting or something like that, then it's beginning to be like the old antipsychotics and would be somewhat toxic to cells. But even then, Haldol is 10 times as toxic as the, as the Risperidol. <clears throat> now, this is, this is really unfortunate because uh, I just had a patient today and, and she has had multiple manic episodes in her lifetime and she just had a few recently. And each manic episode is damaging to the brain. It, each one is traumatic to the brain. And in one of the uh, hospitals she ended up in, they gave her a lot of Haldol. So not only is she undergoing a toxic experience with the mania, but then she's being given a medicine that's toxic to her brain cells also. Uh, this, this is uh, very bad. And in the prison systems, this happens all the time. They use Haldol because it's so cheap. So a lot of these prisoners are mentally ill and they probably should be in a hospital and not in a prison. And, uh, and then they're given Haldol rather than one of the new medicines because it's so cheap. So then they're getting their brain further deteriorated, further harmed. The, these mental illnesses are bad for the brain themselves. The uh, depressions actually have a uh, very negative effect. When you have a major depression, like an agitated depression, a depression so severe that you can't function. After that depression, generally there's a two to four percent decline in the person's uh, cognitive abilities. And uh, Dr. McIntyre up in uh, Toronto has been doing research on this. And, and he says, this is why you see so many people that have had recurrent depressions and then they're all better and they look fine and they look like they're ready to go back to work and they want to get on disability. And they, they in fact, are not lazy. They, in fact, know that they're not functioning. And they're not really functioning at the level they need to, to uh, uh, to satisfy their employer like they did before. And uh, this is why it's so important to, uh, for us to treat these illnesses promptly and not allow them to recur. With, <sighs> with recurrent manias, it's even worse. I spent a little time on the uh, computer today doing some searches and the, the brain damage uh, of recurrent manic episodes is very significant, but I couldn't, you know, get anything quantifiable like IQ or how much brain tissue was, uh, was damaged on average or lost on average per uh, episode, but it is significant. And once someone has had five or six different manic episodes, then frequently they just are not able to function uh, at a job anymore. Their executive functioning is down, their, their ability to make basic decisions is, is very poor, and uh, they become unemployable. I have one patient I saw yesterday who I saw when he was 19. At 19, he was a little manic. He was definitely bipolar, and he was very resistant to getting any treatment. 
he didn't want to take medication. He felt good. And of course, we all argued with him. And then he came back to me eight years later. And in those eight years, he had multiple hospitalizations for manic episodes. And when he came back to me, he said, well, I'm a schizophrenic. I need Clozaril, or otherwise I hear voices. Now, he, I don't think he is schizophrenic, but he's, he's a bipolar who's had so many manic episodes that he's become more and more ill, and now he's on the most heavy-duty medication imaginable to keep him under control. And if we had been able to induce him to take the right medication in the beginning, he would be on much less medication, and he might be married now and having a job and doing okay. He's a very nice fellow. He's doing well now, but he's on a lot of medication, and he doesn't think very fast, and his brain is damaged from all these, uh, from all these uh, manic episodes. Now, there's uh, a couple of th things that are neuroprotective I wanted to mention. One is lithium, and anybody getting close to 60 years old should think about taking a very low dose of lithium, like uh, five milligrams a day, which you could get on the internet, because areas of the world that have a lot of lithium in the drinking water, those areas have much less Alzheimer's. And we have other proof that it's protective. And uh, in manic depressives, they have a very high rate of Alzheimer's, but the ones taking just a little bit of lithium, uh, their rate of Alzheimer's is like everybody else's. So that is something that's neuroprotective. Uh, another thing that's neuroprotective is uh, NAC, NAC, N-acetylcysteine, and probably we should be giving that to patients when they are in an agitated depression or in a mania because it uh, increases our own antioxidant and, and cleans out all the poisons, the free radicals. The uh, Well, there's research going on all the time, but Right now, all of the new antipsychotics, the atypicals, they're all good. They're all fine. Uh, Seroquel, Vralar, Rexulti, Abilify. Yeah, we, um, did, we did a video about it. Yeah, about yeah, all of those atypicals. Th those those are safe and they're and they're actually neuroprotective. Now they may give you side effects and be unpleasant, and maybe one isn't, so you'd want to move to another one. But uh, they're all okay. But, uh, uh, and one of the things that I, I left out about toxic is marijuana is toxic. This THC kills brain cells. And I'm, I'm not so happy about it getting legalized. Now, the CBD, I'm not an expert in, in, uh, in marijuana by any means, but the CBD is a, a, a form of... Uh, uh, cannabinoid that apparently is not toxic to brain cells and uh, we're hoping to find whether it or some other chemical similar to it will have have a significant uh, help with depression or anxiety or something but it, it's not ready for prime time but I definitely would not fool around with marijuana because it's killing your brain cells and over, and this has been known for some time that People that are on it longer and smoke it longer, their memory is worse than people with less. But now we have basic research with animals, and and uh, their brain cells are destroyed by it. And uh, it's not a, it's not a good thing to take. Just because something's natural doesn't mean it's naturally good. Uh, now TMS uh, is interesting. It's uh, it's uh, probably neuroprotective. It, it increases BDNF, the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, the growth hormone of the brain. And we have a lady with um, uh, Lewy body disease, which is like uh, Alzheimer's, and she was going downhill very fast. And then we uh, began treating her for uh, some 
depression, some Parkinsonian symptoms, some other things. And, uh, and after a year, her uh, mini mental status exam stayed the same. It did not deteriorate. She stayed the same. And that's really remarkable that uh, somebody who's on a downhill course with Lewy body or Alzheimer's, you expect them to keep going downhill and be in a wheelchair relatively rapidly. And uh, I think that this uh, protected her. I thought she was on a little lithium at the same time, but it turns out she was just the TMS. Uh, so, uh, and th there's other evidence that TMS is neuroprotective. And uh, I hope that this will end up being something that will help out with Alzheimer's and other disorders like this and, and slow down the progress of disorders like Parkinson's. It definitely helps out Parkinson's, but whether it slows down the progress of it is going to take more research. Thank you very much.